Hey, good morning and welcome to another COVID edition of Scurby Teaches from the Basement. Uh, I know you Science 8 kiddos haven't uh, seen or heard from me in a while, so let's catch up with some content. Where are we at so far? Now, with the new con content, we've been talking about biological or ecological cycles. That is for those of you that have actually been doing the work online. Now, why are these cycles important? Well, if you guys remember from the second law, whoops, oh, that's terrible. If you guys remember from the second law, energy can't be what? Can't be recycled. Can't recycle energy. So we know that's true. That's universal through the universe. But what can you recycle? Now, if you were doing some of the work online and watching the videos specifically, you would have heard this, but what you can recycle, and we'll put a big question mark there, what you can recycle are the containers. Now, what do those containers mean? Uh, that would be anything related to chemistry or biochemistry that has the potential to store energy. So it's, it's kind of like a Tupperware container. You have the container in the lid, and that container can store energy. When you take the lid off and the energy comes out, you can never get the energy back, but... What do you still have? You have the container. Well, what do the containers represent? Well, those either can be molecules, such as water, or it could be certain elements. You know, in an eighth grade, important ones, now we're only gonna talk about two, but there's actually three. Uh, there's carbon, and then there's nitrogen, and then there's phosphorus. All of those important, carbon, you know what, I better write those out so you guys can see that. Carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And there are two spellings for that. I like that one. That's kind of like the old school science version. So you have molecules, and then you have these three elements. These, not only can they be recycled, they must be. And why is that? Because they're in limited supply our planet only has a limited amount of each one of these things. And you're like, hey, scurves, man, there's water everywhere. Well, the reality is there is a lot of water on our planet, but how much is usable? How much usable water is there? So I'll put H2O here, that's water. See, that's water, that's water, that's water, that's water. How much is usable? When you look at fresh water, it's you know, really close to 1% of the water on our planet is reusable, so it's very important for these to be recycled. Now, on this page, what have we covered so far? I'm gonna circle them. You guys should have already looked at the water cycle, and you should have looked at the importance of the carbon cycle, because let's face it, carbon is the number one element. It's the, it's the, uh, the core fabric of our existence in terms of biochemistry. Now, we are not gonna do this one this year. You might see that next year in Walzer's class. But today, we're going to focus on the nitrogen cycle and why that's so important. So let's go to that real quick. I'm going to pull this back down, and I'm going to put the nitrogen cycle here. Now, if you're watching this at home, uh, you might want to take some notes. You could be thinking, oh, I'll watch the video again. But the reality is, will you watch the video again? For most of you, I'll be glad if you just watch it one time. Okay, now let's take a look at nitrogen. So here we go, nitrogen has an atomic number of 17, an atomic mass of 14, pretty important, okay? Why is it important? Well, let's just be honest. All organisms need, oh, that looks so bad, need nitrogen. So the next question is, I mean, you gotta do it, why? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Nitrogen is used to build amino acids. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of this this year because that is all Mrs. Walzer's realm for the uh, keystones next year. Now, why are amino acids important? Well, you've all heard this. You, you should leave a little arrow right there. Amino acids are the building blocks, and that is so elementary school, by the way. The big term science word would be monomers or residues. Amino acids are used to build, I'm not going to say more important because they're all important, but I am going to say it more importantly, protein. 
And protein is, it's what we are. It's the structure of all living organisms. So you can't exist without protein. Therefore, you can't exist without amino acids. Therefore, guess what every living organism needs on the planet? It needs nitrogen. So let's take a look at usable nitrogen forms on our planet. So I'm going to go right here. Don't worry about my notes being sloppy. You, you can write them much neater than this. On the planet, there are several forms that are important. Let's start with number one. I'm going to put a star by it because it's the most abundant. Okay, And it is nitrogen in its purest form as a diatomic gas. And you're going to find this as 78% of the atmosphere. And I know most people out there, especially if they're not watching this video, they think the atmosphere is full of oxygen. That's not true at all. The atmosphere is only about 21% uh, oxygen. So nitrogen, and this is a gas, I better put that, this is a gas in its pure form, is 78% of the atmosphere. Now there's two others that are important. So give a little space here because I'm going to list these guys together. Okay, One of them is NO3-. minus. And this is a molecule called a nitrate. That's NO3 minus. And then the next one, its close cousin, is NO2 minus. That's a nitrite. Okay, now where are you going to find these? You're going to find these in the soil and water, both fresh and salt. So these are the three forms. Obviously, put a box around it. The overwhelming, most common one is nitrogen in its gas form. But, here's a little thing you may not have known. Almost all organisms, almost all, so that's most bacteria, then you go through protists, fungi, plants, and animals, all of the kingdoms, all of them, all of them, total. Almost all organisms cannot use or access nitrogen gas. Oh, -ho! so what you're saying there, scurb dog, is we got ourselves a living problem. Everything on the planet needs nitrogen to build amino acids so they can build proteins to maintain their cells and their existence, but we don't have access to the form of nitrogen and that's most common. And we're like, well, hey, scurbs, then we'll just use these ones. Au contraire. Uh, you are going to use those ones, but it's not that easy. In fact, when you look at N2 gas, nitrogen gas in the atmosphere, only certain bacteria, and not all of them, certain bacteria can utilize nitrogen gas. And then, and only then, it's when nitrogen gas is in the soil. And don't worry, you think gases are only in the environment. Trust me, there's plenty of room in the soil for gases to exist. And if, they could, if there wasn't gases in the soil, then plants probably wouldn't exist. So in the soil, some bacteria can utilize nitrogen gas. That's something called, and this is important, nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation. I hate to jam that down at the bottom of the page. But nitrogen fixation is when bacteria take N2 gas and through biological chemical pathways, they convert nitrogen gas into NO3 minus and NO2 minus. Whoa, nitrates, I'm sorry, nitrates and nitrites. Look at that. So some bacteria, it's very limited on our planet, have the ability to turn atmospheric gas into these two guys. And I'm telling you right now, these are usable. This is going to be cool. Now, from all of this, this whole section right here, okay, you guys already have that. You can just rewind. From that comes the all important, and I'll wrap it up with this, the nitrogen cycle. This is how is nitrogen as a limited nutrient recycled and cycled on our planet so life can use it to make protein. All right, so I'm just going to do a big loop right here, and then I'll be talking as I go. Not all of the notes will be written. You're going to, you might have to write some side notes or some notes under here, but hey, it's on video. You can just keep hitting rewind. And who doesn't want to hear my voice over and over and over and over again? Like me and the other six people that live in my head. Okay, let's start with nitrogen gas, pure form, in the atmosphere. So if we start right there, the basic premise is it's unusable, but... 
as per prior instruction, there are certain bacteria, and a lot of these have uh, symbiotic relationships with plants and legumes and other things and grow on their roots and kind of help the whole planet out. These bacteria, watch this, and I'm probably just going to just keep going. I don't know how it's going to look here. Through a process called nitrogen fixation, these bacteria have the ability through this process, nitrogen fixation, to convert nitrogen gas into nitrate and nitrites. So you can go back in your notes and look at those. Okay, And those are now usable forms of nitrogen on the planet. So who in the soil, if these things are produced in the soil by the bacteria on our planet, who has access? I say who, it's not a who. What organisms have access first? Well, if you look at any ecological pyramid, what always comes first? Producers. Producers, and that's both uh, in soil and aquatic environments because this happens not only in the soil, this happens in waterways as well. These producers then use these nitrates and nitrites, they pick them up to make protein. Now that nitrogen in those nitrates and nitrites is locked into protein form. Well, what happens to the pro what happens to the producers? Hmm. The producers get eaten by consumers. Huh. If consumers eat the producers that had the protein from the nitrates and nitrates that came from the bacteria, look at this. Now we get to reuse that nitrogen. And don't forget, we're consumers. So we're, now we're multi-tiered consumers, so we're getting our, our protein uh, from both plant and animal material. But what we do is we break down the proteins from other living organisms, and then we use those amino acids to rebuild our own proteins. So that same nitrogen is cycling through life through the food web or, the, or, uh, or through limited food chains. Okay? Now, What's eventually going to happen to the consumers? Oh, this is the sad part of the story. Oh, it's so sad. What's going to happen to the consumers? You guessed it. They're going to die. Now, don't say, whoa, sorry about that. Don't say they're going to get eaten because if they get eaten, then we're still right here at the reuse nitrogen thing as nitrogen cycles through the food web. But let's take a look at organisms eventually dying. Now, all of that protein structure they have is still in them. So what happens? Oh, I don't know. They decay. So you have that whole uh, group of organisms called decomposers or uh, detrivores that start to break down this material, start to break down proteins to their primary form. As this decay happens, something else is happening, something called denitrification. Denitrification is the decaying process. And as you break protein down through denitrification, because things are rotting, what is released into the atmosphere? Oh, I don't know. It's a cycle. Let me do this. Oh, ah, nitrogen gas released right back into the atmosphere. So you can see who's the linchpin here. The keystone of this whole thing are those limited species of bacteria that can take nitrogen gas and then convert it into a usable form. And then the cycle rages. And you can see without nitrogen, life couldn't even exist on this planet. Without this cycle, it definitely couldn't exist. So that's your lesson for today. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. And uh, just so you know, it's just so you know, it's me. Let me pick this phone up, and I'm going to turn it around. Hey, look at that! It's Scurb Dog. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Uh, actually, I still can't see you. And if you're wondering why am I wearing this toboggan, two things. If you watch any of my other videos, you know my basement is freezing. And number two, who doesn't think this little thing up here is really cool? Like when you get bored, you can just you can just do that, or you, you can shake your head, kind of like that. Uh, well, that's all I have for today. So you guys uh, keep watching the classroom and tune in for future lessons. Hope you're all staying well and not losing your mind from staying indoors. See you next time.